I'm reading an article titled Move Over Docker Files, The New Way to Craft Containers. This is by Jason Hall and Zachary Newman. You can follow along by going to the link below down here at the bottom of the screen. Docker has become an immensely popular tool in the world of software development, and for good reason. It provides an excellent way to create, manage, and deploy containers, which in turn enables developers to run applications at work in the same way in development and production. However, creating Docker images can sometimes be a pain, as anybody who has accidentally broken the APT cache, app cache, uh, and triggered an hours-long build by making a minor change can tell you. The standard Docker file approach to creating container images can cause number one, security concerns. Docker files make it hard to know what's in a package. This often results in low quality software bill of materials or S bombs. Build commands in Docker files end up as metadata in the resulting image, which can leak secrets as recently noted in this Aqua security report, and then they provide the link. Running Docker is a privileged operation which risks attack on your build infrastructure. Performance issues. Docker files might take a long time to build and don't effectively use caches. Bloated containers. Docker file containers can have extra files which consume bandwidth and storage and worse, might introduce security vulnerabilities. And our last one here is exposed build services. Common Dockerfile build patterns require internet access, meaning that build infrastructure heavily favors an online environment and non-hermetic builds. So the title of their next section is called The Issue with Dockerfiles. A Dockerfile is effectively a shell script that runs to set up a container image. Consider this example adapted from, and then here's the link, it says from Ubuntu run set, and then I'll, I'll let you read the rest of this. They say this is easy to write, but hard to reason about. For instance, the apt get install line needs to chain several commands together to follow the Docker file best practices and avoid leaving extra files in the final image. Docker files have a few well-known issues that can make them less an ideal solution for crafting containers. So the first one appears to be non-hermetic. A hermetic build declares its inputs explicitly, which allows prefetching of inputs and builds that can run offline. Docker files contain Explicit dependencies because they fetch dependencies online at build time without explicitly pinning an exact file hash. The internet changes constantly as new packages are published or servers have outages. In our example, the exact packages installed will depend on the state of the Ubuntu package repository at the time the Docker build occurs. Docker file builds can be made hermetic with a disciplined approach, but you'll always be fighting to detect and fix reproducibility regressions because that's not what the tool or Docker file spec wants to do. Even the recommended best practices, and they have a link, have hermeti hermeticity <laughs> problems. Ultimately, without hermeticity, uh, a Docker file or a Docker image can't be re reproducible, which has problems for caching as well as verifiability. Further, builds will need to happen online, increasing the risk to the build infrastructure. What's in your image? Docker files usually start with a base image, like Ubuntu, which comes with a lot of software. This may lead to hundreds of vulnerabilities in your final image due to software you don't even care about. In many cases, these vulnerabilities are not exploitable, but it only takes one, and manually checking each can be a pain. Further, Docker builds can lead to software dark matter, which are files with an unexplained source, for instance, those that don't come from a package manager. These can be confusing to software composition analysis, abbreviated SCA, tools like Gripe, spelled G-R-Y-P-E, SNCC, SNYK, and Trivi. In addition to vulnerabilities, these extra files can cause bloat, leading to larger image sizes and extra bandwidth and storage costs. 
Dockerfile-based builds can generate software bills of materials, but these SBOMs miss many dependencies even though more information about the package is available at build time than any point later on. Docker build tooling does support creating build provenance attestations, which can play a useful role in a secure software supply chain. Even multi-stage Docker files, which can prevent build dependencies from ending up in the final image, have many of these same issues. So now we're in the section called Alternatives to Docker Files. The first is KO. It is a CNCF project designed specifically for Go applications. To compile a Go app and place it directly into a container, a user simply runs KO build. In many cases, no configuration is required. This tool doesn't depend on Docker, which makes it faster, more reliable, and portable. It also produces reproducible images with software bills of materials by default and results in very minimal images. When KO works for your application, it's an incredible tool, but it only works for pure Go applications. If your container needs another service, strange libraries, or CGO, you might be out of luck. There are KO-like projects for Java and .NET, which share the same strengths and limitations. The next alternative to Dockerfile is called Bazel Rules underscore OCI. This was created by Changard CTO Matt Moore, and Changard is the website I'm reading this article from. Apparently, this uh, leverages Basil, an open source universal build tool. I think I mispronounced that earlier, saying Basil, Basil, Basil. Either way, users define their container image in what's called a uh, Basil rule. And so I'll show that here uh, rules underscore OCI. You set this up uh, by typing OCI underscore image. Like last time, I'll let you read the rest of this. You can definitely pause here. They say if your application already builds in Basil, it's easy to pull the targets into the ultimate Docker image and configure it to run. And because it uses Basil, it's fast with good caching, reproducible, and can run across a larger build cluster. So now I'll just skip down to the next one, Nix. It's a build tool that emphasizes reproducibility. It's based on academic theory as described in this link. Nix's Docker Tools library provides excellent support for uh, building Docker images. And this looks a little different than the other ones we've looked at so far. They list some details about this. The Nix language is a full uh, blown programming language, not just a configuration format like YAML. It looks like our last one is Appco. It's a build tool, again from ChainGuard, designed specifically for creating base images. I'll start by showing the example, and then I'll just read what they're saying. Oh, forgot to give you time to pause here if you need to see it. So it looks like uh, this Appco, A-P-K-O, is what ChainGuard uses to build all their images. And it's instrumental in being able to effectively maintain so many high quality images. Apco uses the APK package format used by Alpine Linux and follows a radical principle. All of the contents of the container image must come from APK packages. In practice, this isn't a big constraint as tooling like Melange makes it easy to create APKs. Wolfi uses Melange to build the thousands of packages it provides, but limiting image creation to assembling packages and configuring Docker metadata comes with huge benefits. The first one is building is lightning fast, images are reproducible, builds are more secure and don't require any privileges. They work by downloading packages over HTTPS and assembling images, not executing any other commands. And the last one is images come with S-bombs that are complete. So in conclusion, declarative approaches to building containers, such as those provided by the alternatives mentioned above, offer several advantages over traditional Docker files. They're generally faster, provide better caching, and result in more minimal images. They do involve learning and installing new software, which is a real cost. 
So what should you do? The following guidance is appropriate in most cases. If you've already, uh, if you already use and love a build system like Basil or Nix, use that ecosystem's Docker tooling to get reproducible Hermetic builds. If your applications work with special purpose tools like KO, JIB, or .NET Publish, use those. If you care about build speed, reproducibility, software bill of materials for your containers, and minimal images, use Apco. Otherwise, use Docker files. Consider using base images that come from the above tools. Thanks for watching.